You're watching Poindexter Lounge. You already know. You're watching Poindexter Lounge for the unity. Hi, you're watching Poindexter Lounge. I I'm choking on chicken. And now I'll make the point better. This joint's clever in the lounge with Poindexter. So Poindexter Lounge, you know that we can get it in. And now I'm headed up like I'm Led Zeppelin. <laughs> What's up, nerd family? Welcome once again to the Poindexter Lounge. My name is Enosh, aka Enosh Fett, and it is good to have you with me in the lounge right now, whenever it is, uh, wherever you are as we're pre-recording this. But hey, if this is your first time to the lounge, just know that the Poindexter Lounge is a place for nerds. It's a place where you and me and my friends can get together and talk about the things that we love, things like TV shows, movies, games, sci-fi, fantasy, comic books, superheroes, toys, music, and so much more. And if those are things that get you excited, if those are things uh, that get you pulling out your old uh, albums or CDs, or yes, even a cassette, remember those boys and girls, then hey, you have found the right place and uh, you need to subscribe to the channel. So please hit that subscribe button as well as that notification bell so that you know when we put out videos and of course, when we go live because we do lots of great live uh, discussions and panel discussions and things like that. And so, um, you're going to want to be here for that. We want you here for it because we have a lot of fun here in the lounge uh, for sure. Like we always say, you never know exactly what's going to happen here at the Poindexter Lounge. So uh, so please hit that subscribe button and become part of what we do. Speaking of becoming part of what we do, I want to say a quick shout out to all of our patrons. Thank you all for your support. We really, really appreciate all of you. Uh, you all just mean so much to us in the fact that uh, you, know, you watch the videos, but you also support us financially. And uh, you know what? That just means the world to us. And so very, very thankful for you. Everyone who's a, uh, a patron, of course, everyone who gives super chats at any time uh, during our live streams and also to all of our members. Thank you so much for your support as well. And uh, don't forget that as uh, a member or as a patron, uh, you get all kinds of great bonus you know, stuff, right? As a member, you get you get cool emojis. So when we do live streams, you get to use those and things. And then, of course, uh, you know, you get to see videos before anybody else. And uh, there's just a lot of other bonuses and stuff. So go take a look at that. Check that out. Also check out our Teespring for some cool uh, shirts and designs and fun stuff like that. Now, today I want to tackle something that's a little bit different and uh, I didn't want to do it in like a full blown live stream, but I did want to talk to a couple of people about it. And that is uh, this issue. And some of you are going to say, who? Yingve Momstein. Yes. 80s guitar virtuoso Yingve Momstein is in the news and uh, gave an article this week. And you're going to want, if you're wondering Yingve who, you're not alone, trust me. And we're going to get into that though. And why? Because uh, the guy started insulting uh, punk music. And you know what? He's got a history of doing this. He's kind of got an attitude of, of just about himself, about his guitar playing. He's a great guitar player. But we'll, we'll get into all that here pretty soon. But before we do that, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to welcome a couple of my friends into um, into the show uh, real quick. And that is, of course, uh, first of all, you love him, T.W. McKay. What's up, T.W.? I'm good. I've been looking forward to this. I think this is going to be really fun. Yeah, man. Just wanted to do something different, uh, you know, and I'm a musician, been a musician for most of my life. Yeah. And so uh, this is something that, yeah, it's kind of kind of hits home for me. But also, ladies and gentlemen, I, I asked uh, somebody else to come and join this uh, show. And that is our uh, our good friend, Lena Deli. Hey, guys. How What's are going you? on? It's going to be interesting, man. <laughs> yeah, man. Now, uh, Lena Deli, you are a guitar player. I've seen yeah, your stuff, man. I've seen you playing, man. You You rock, bro. You, uh, no, man. No, man. You rock. I oh, saw you rock, too. <laughs> no, no, he you... rocks. He rocks, dude. Yeah. Well, you know, we try. We try. We do what we can, man. But no, seriously, man, you are a great guitar player. Why don't you yeah, tell everybody where you're from? Well. Why don't you tell everybody where you're from? Well, as you know, Inash, I'm from Morocco. Okay. Yeah, Does man. anyone here uh, heard about Morocco before? Oh, no? yeah, man. I've heard yeah. about Morocco. Heck yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> Heck what, yes. what did you hear about Morocco, TW? Tell me. 
I've heard good things. I've heard good, good food, good music, and that you guys speak both Arabic and French. And English. I know that you obviously speak English. Oh, I didn't know that there was a, as far as, I didn't know that. I mean, you know about English, obviously, we're having this conversation, but like, (laughs) I didn't know that like Spanish was sort of a sort of official language over there. Yeah, we have French, English, Arabic, and Spanish. That's really cool. That's awesome. Northern areas, man. That's awesome. So what is it? Look, look, Inas. Yes. Nice. that today. Yeah. Heck yeah, man. Always, always got to represent the, the, the Zack Snyder's Justice League stuff. Snyder versus Cap. Absolutely. I don't care oh, what yeah. we're talking about. We'll we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll we'll throw in a restore the Snyder verse just, just for the fun yeah. of it. Absolutely. Uh, but I asked you guys to, to come in and talk about this because I know that you, you both appreciate like eighties metal, eighties rock. Uh, and it's something that I look, I appreciate it. I, I grew up in that era. Uh, and I, you know, I've played in bands. I, I, you know, I've played in bands that, that do a lot of that style, but I love all music. And that's why this yeah. kind of, really ticked me off when, when I saw this yeah. article because uh, because I love all music and I think that all music feeds into itself like we were just talking about before we went live like if you go back in time I mean you know you got you know R&B and soul and you know I mean and then just even even you know uh, just man man the 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 spirituals of old and stuff and the, how that evolved and music evolved man and then you had the 50s and the 60s you know and it just transcends and then it turns into yeah. to rock and metal and 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 so much more and then now it is what we have today and look i get it some people will say that today's music sucks because you know it's all electronic and you know they're taking the 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 technicality out of it but I think that all music has a place, no matter mm-hmm. how you make it. If, if you make it in a computer, if you make it on an instrument, it takes yeah. some knowledge, right, to, to be able to do. And so uh, so I appreciate it all. But I wanted to have you guys here because I wanted to get your opinions. I didn't want it to just be my rant about this. Yeah. I wanted I wanted to. Uh, and to we definitely that. need Jarbo here, man. He knows how to <laughs> but I don't think I'm Jarbo sorry. knows music like we know music. Yeah. So, well, so you know, uh, I was reminded of with this conversation, right? When you were talking about, <clears throat> pardon me a moment, when you were talking about the the issue with like technology and things like that and music. I actually think of there's a great song I love that I think of when I think of that. I think of the song "The Spirit of Radio" by Rush. Right? Mm-hmm. What's that? What's that middle? Yeah. What does that middle verse say? Right? All this machinery making modern music can still be open hearted. It's really just, a, you know, missing a line or two there, but it's really just a question of your honesty. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. As long as you have your, as long as you're doing it for the right reasons, for the purpose of expression yeah. and, you know, and you, and you're doing it because you love music and you feel it's what you want to do. Then I think no matter what the music is, as long as there's that heart and passion into it, yeah. you're, you're going to be able to have a, a, something yeah, that I mean, people will resonate with. Music is a language that everyone speaks. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So for those of you who are like, you stumbled upon this video and you're like, Yingve who? We're going to tell you who, who Yingve is. So Yingve is this is this 80s guitar virtuoso. He's an amazing guitar. The guy plays super fast. Yeah. I mean, the guy, the guy, he's known, he's known for his speed. Let's just yes. put, super put that talented, out there. Man. Super talented. Yeah, he's super talented. You know, he plays several instruments. He does things and no one can ever take that away from him. Right. Uh, you know, but the thing is, he's got a bit of an attitude problem and he's always had kind of an attitude problem. I mean, I talked about this on our stream the other night, uh, but this was his T-shirt for like the longest time, man. That it's like, you know, on one side it says it says actually it says Yingve Hu. And then uh, that's why every time I say Yingve Hu, I kind of chuckle because then on the back side it said this. Yeah. Right. And so, uh, you know, so he was always a bit full of himself. He's one of those people that if I have to explain it to you guys he he believes his own hype okay yeah and there's nothing wrong with being talented and a- acknowledging the fact that you're talented but if you buy too much into your own hype you yeah. end up coming across like a jerk now have you uh tw let me ask you man because i know that we we kind of talked about this a little bit and and you you kind of shared with me that like do you really appreciate his music see like i got to a point where it's like i couldn't even appreciate his music anymore even though it was a style that i kind of like and you know that i like a lot actually you know i mean that that 80s sound and everything yeah and and i should like it as a guitar player right yeah but i just i can't get past his attitude so and that's so, okay yeah so but share share with me your feelings on on yingve i think my opinion with yingve is this it's very much his ego is is 
problematic to a point that it's almost self-destructive. I like his like his first. Yeah. He had several early records, particularly through the '80s and even through the '90s. And even even there's even a couple of great records into right about 2000, 2001. But those all had, as we'll discuss later, because I have we we did just talk about this a little bit earlier. Um, Enosh was the issue of collaboration. On those older records, he had phenomenal musicians with him who, you know, now populate and have populated fantastic heavy metal bands of the last 25, 30, 35 years. Mm -hmm. And so I, the, the music was great. The songwriting was great. But for whatever reason, right around the mid-2000s, Ingve made the decision to not only play most of the instruments himself, but to also sing himself as opposed to <laughs> hiring vocalists or additional <laughs> band members or anything like that. He still will like hire a band for the purposes of live shows and touring. But... I know cause God forbid, God forbid you like, you have to actually <laughs> hire a band, right. To play live. I mean, at this point I'm surprised he honestly, at this point I'm surprised he honestly does not go on stage with nothing but like, like tracks. a tape, a tracks yeah. of just all the instruments and the vocals, except for like, except for guitar. And then mm-hmm. just walk out on stage on his own. That I, I yeah. hope that puts into perspective my opinion of his music relative to my opinion of his ego. Yeah. Now, Lena Deli, you're a guitar yeah, player. Man. You're a guitar yeah. player. You know who Yingve is. What What is your opinion of Yingve? Man, as I told you before, I really don't like him. Just the vibe he gave he gave me since the first time I listened to him. No man, no way. There's no way I'm going to listen to that dude. <laughs> as you, yeah, man. Uh, as you said, his ego is beyond, uh, beyond everything I've seen. Yeah, he, gets, he got to the point. He got so good. He basically thinks he's God. Yeah. And the, the crazy thing is, is there's a lot of guitar players who actually treat him that way as well. Yeah. That like he's just like the pinnacle of all that, you know, should be as far as guitar players and, and whatnot. And and I'll be yeah. honest with you. Look, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna criticize him too much as far as his playing because his playing is his playing, and every guitar player has their own thing, right? And so and so I get that. To me, he's kind of just got he's kind of stuck. He kind of got to like one point, like you said, he kind of got so good at that that one thing that like the speed thing. And I mean, you, you know, he's he's just got it. The, the, yeah. You know, it just makes it look effortless. You know, effortless. Yeah. But you know, for me. For me, I like guitar players, and, and I've always set out to try to be a guitar player who played melodically. Look, it, you got to have speed where it's needed, you know. Yeah. Uh, but you know, to power through something or whatever. But like, I look at people like like Eddie Van Halen, for example. And I know that's kind of cliche for a lot of people, you know. It's like, oh, Eddie, yeah, well, yeah. of course. But the thing is, what I loved about Eddie was was that he was innovative, uh, but also, and, and look, Eddie had an attitude problem too. But for but it's interesting because uh, it, it 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 it's nowhere near <laughs> it's nowhere near Yingve Momstein. It's a different breed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it is. But, no, it's a... yeah. but don't get me wrong, Inaj. He's good. He's really good. Yeah. Okay. He's good. But come on, man. Music is about respect. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And that's that's a great point, uh, Lena Deli, yes. because. Because like when I listen to when I listen to Eddie Van Halen and I see like what the kind of things that he did, he was also a good songwriter. You know yeah. what I mean? And 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 yes. it was more about the presentation and what was and what was going on there. And I look at other guitar players. I mean, from from bands that I've loved. Uh, you know, one of my favorite guys is Nuno Betancourt. Oh come on, man! Yeah, yeah, extreme. Dude, guys, phenomenal. Nuno, yeah. Nuno he Betancourt. Shreds. He shreds. Oh my gosh! Uh, yeah, he's, he's, he's a guy so who's underrated, not. Man. And he's a guy who's not afraid to kind of cross genres. A lot of people don't remember this about maybe sort of 10 to 15 years ago, maybe a little bit less than that. Uh, he was Rihanna's touring guitar player. Mm-hmm. He actually was oh, on, yeah. like you, 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 see, you can see him on a couple of different live, like live performances she's done on like Kimmel and things like that. He's there. He's like, it's right there. I'm like, it's, it's Nuno Badencore. Holy shnikey. <laughs> but yeah, right. back to, yeah, but do continue. So that's, that's what, that's what I like when, when I, when I see guitar players. Also, I've said things like before that it's like, if I, if I could sound like anybody, like, and and I know it's, it's kind of, it's, it's not the, the flashy, whatever, but I think that, I think that the dude 
was always a phenomenal guitar player. And that's like somebody like Eric Clapton, for example. Right. Just yeah. the, the tone and the feel. And, yeah, and I've, and why I, is this certain touch, man? Yeah. And I've often even said, like, I played, I've played with guys before that like mocked people like BB King even. Right. Yeah. Like, and that, bo that bothers me. That bothers me because they would say, well, all he does is play a blues pentatonic scale and, and, you know, and, and he barely, you know, plays any notes. He's just like kind of hammer one note. And I, and I would look back at those people and I would say, you know what? BB King plays with more feel and there's more expression and emotion in one note of him just holding out a note than than a million notes that that Ying Vei plays. Yeah, but did you see did you he ever see the making shred, shred in that? Oh yeah. Yeah, he has a video. You, you can, can find it. it on YouTube, man. Yeah. BB King's shreds dude. And that's, not, see, that's so low key, knows, right? Yeah. yeah. He knows like, what to do and when to do it. And that's what I think yeah. is so lost. You know, oh, yeah. it's not just about kind of hitting, you know, hyper speed all the time. Like in my case, if I could be one guitar player, because in my opinion, the combination of his versatility, his technique, and even to an extent, his speed that I could, if I could have his skill set would be mm -hmm. Paul Gilbert. That's oh, my yeah. Yeah. that's my guitar hero. Paul Gilbert for for our viewers was in um was in a couple of great bands. He was in a, a great great sort of over the top uh, heavy metal band from the eighties called Racer X. And then a little bit mm -hmm. later on, he joined a band called Mr. Big. You might know the, oh, yeah. the great power ballad they did called To Be With You. He did a great song that I love called Daddy Brother Lover Little Boy, which is a perfect combination of kind of a blues rock, hard rock, and in the late eighties, yeah. early nineties context. But it's got the guitar solo parts, have crazy shreddy parts, and actually beat Eddie Van Halen to using a drill for the guitar by about five years. Really? If you guys, okay. if you guys ever want to check that out, highly recommend yeah, of course. watching any live performance of the song Daddy, Brother, Lover, Little Boy. Uh, Paul Gilbert has a Makita drill with three <laughs> guitar picks glued to the end in sort of like a triangle fashion. And so at really? the end of the solo, what he'll do is he'll start up the drill and basically, you know, <laughs> like <laughs> over nice. the guitar. And the best part is the bassist, Billy Sheehan. Oh, Billy uh, Sheehan. He actually, all, he's amazing. And he also uses, as far as I can remember, uses a drill during the same portion. But yes, that's a perfect example of a band that knows when to turn on the speed and turn on the craziness, but also knows when to pull it back and do your kind of your ballads, your, you know, to be with you, yeah. just take my heart, stuff like that. So exactly. Paul Gilbert, if you also listen to his solo career, he was also a guy who has an incredibly broad understanding of music. And he, he's not afraid to, you know, bring in blues influences and, and mm -hmm. all this stuff. And, and then you got Steve Vai, but that's a whole other discussion he's even oh oh yeah you know, steve by, yeah. but you know like you, you, like you talked you, you talked about like somebody who's able to like do a bunch of different things like that right so like like you know people know that mr big song right uh you know i'm yeah. the one who wants to be with you and whatever well like think about nuno Betancourt, how great he is his 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 uh not just his guitar playing but his uh orchestrational uh yes talents like if you yeah. listen to the album three sides to every story that album is by far one of my all time favorite albums. And he, he orchestrated the entire thing. He, he, he wrote all those parts. He did all those things and, and everything. But, uh, but like, what is extreme known for? They're known for songs like wholehearted more than words and more than words, right? More than, especially more than words. So like yeah. every time, every time I mention so to somebody like, the, like, yeah. like, like, Oh man, one of my favorite guitar players is new, new Bentoncourt, like from extreme. And they're like extreme, like the more than words guys. And I'm like, yeah. yeah. Oh, the yeah. Words. The pl play with words. me, guys, as well. Mm. Four mm -hmm. words. Get yes. The funk out. <laughs> One uh, of uh, my favorite mm. rock guitar solos of the 1990s. Mm. So good. So good. Yeah. But so, so for you, uh, so we're, we're kind of reminiscing here about guitar players. But if you're wondering why I did this video, here's why. Because I'm going to share with you now <laughs> guitar.com that, that, that caught my eye. And I was just like, this is so disrespectful 
to other musicians. Look, we talk about it here a lot in the lounge, like about nerd stuff, right? About respecting other people, respecting, uh, you know, what they what they like and, and the things that they like and, you know, not allow not letting anybody tell you that your fandom doesn't matter and not telling them that their fandom doesn't matter. Well, I also think that 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 bleeds over into music, right? Like you should yeah. not be you can like whatever you like, but don't be disrespectful to people. And I felt like this was disrespectful. So guitar.com, uh, the headline is Yngwie Malmsteen recalls his disdain for punk. What the F is this? Why don't you tune the guitar? Why do you sing like that? Which, you know, uh, TW, I think we could all be asking Yngwie the exact same question uh, on a couple of his songs. <laughs> Why do you sing like that, sir? Uh, I can I can say that I can say, I can ask the last question for sure. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's a, and here it says uh, it says uh, he also said that the genre wore out before 1991, seemingly missing out on three decades of punk music. Now this article is by no uh, kidding. Yeah, Cillian uh, Breathnotch. And so uh, it, it, we're just going to go through this and we'll give our uh, our thoughts on it. It says uh, shred guitarist Yngwie Malmsteen has set out some bold proclamations in a new interview stating both that he doesn't follow trends. <laughs> okay. And that punk <laughs> as a genre wore out before 1991. He also recalled his disdain for what was musically fashionable across his career. Instead, choosing to carve his own sonic path. Uh, t talking to Sonic Perspectives, the guitarist was asked about his approach to the shifting landscape of music trends. He responded, the thing is that I've done this for such a long time. And I was very, I was a very accomplished musician already. Very young, but very accomplished. Yeah. <laughs> That's first of all, you don't, yeah, first of all, you don't say that about thing yourself, to man. Say. It's such, it's such a an thing, thing to say. Don't do that. Come on, man. I, was, I do I was, recommend, though. I do recommend. I will. I will say as a slight antithesis. This is not justify. This is not justify the ego. Yeah. But about in about two thousand, I think it was two thousand six. Um, uh, Ingve put out actually a demo that basically led to the songs that were on Rising Force, which is his first record, and a couple other songs that appear here and there throughout his career. And he actually was a very, very talented guitar player. Oh, doesn't yeah. justify no the doubt, ego. Man. Doesn't justify the ego, but it's. It, I, I think it is. It's just a, a fair sort of. Yeah. Light antithetical. To, and that's to, to and that's fine, situation. man. That's fine. It's just so funny that he's just like, I was a very accomplished musician already, very young, but very accomplished. <laughs> I, I was in junior high, I think, when the first punk wave came, Sex Pistols and stuff, and I was going, "What the f is this? Why don't you tune the guitar?" Why do you sing like that? And in this, guys, I feel like he he shows that he completely doesn't understand. Like he completely misses the point that everything is not supposed to be this sophisticated neo classical, uh, you know, uh, well orchestrated stuff. Like punk is about being sloppy and angry exactly. and 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 emotion and raw raw emotion, you know and. With, with this, it's like he he shows not only his arrogance, but just also the fact that he's not as smart as he thinks he is, exactly. you know, to not be able to appreciate it for what it is. And and I'll be honest with you guys. When I started off as a musician, like I was I was around a lot of music snobs. OK, I was telling you guys before we started, like I was around guys who who looked up to Yngwie, who who just like idolized Yngwie. And when I first saw Yngwie, like all these guys would come to me and they go, what man, doesn't it just make you just want to not even play guitar? It just makes you think you realize you suck and everything. And I was like, no, I do what I do. And this was me like after only playing guitar for like two years. OK, and I sucked. Yeah. I sucked. Right. But I was like, even back then, I was like, well, no, I do what I do and I'm always going to try to get better. but he's doing what he does. Like, why would that make me not want to be any better? But as I got older and I would, and I, I found myself initially. Uh, and, and this scares me actually, because initially when I started playing in bands, you start playing with other bands and stuff and you start looking at them and you start critiquing them and everything. And you start yeah. thinking, Oh, these guys suck. They're not that good, whatever, you know? Uh, and yeah, especially, yeah. And it's, that, man. yeah. And especially <laughs> if it's not, if it's not the genre that you like, 
You know, if it's, yeah. if it's not the thing that you're into, yeah. it's really easy to critique people. But I you know was, what? I, I was one of those idiots. Yeah. And I started. I, I was one of those idiots. Everyone was at right. one point too. Yeah. And dude, I got to a point where I was like, yeah. I can't do that. I don't want to be that. I don't want to be that guy. I, we would see and bands. It always comes from a place of ignorance is what it comes from. Yes. I think, is, is you not, yes. you not, you not wanting to kind of look what look from their perspective, not wanting to empathize is the wrong word, but at least understand why they're making, in this case, making the music, making the art that they're making and the reason, like the reason that they're making it and the reason yeah. that they're making it in the way that they're making it. I think yeah that's what's kind of gets lost in the conversation when you're, when you're so in your own, and this is something which translates to, to our broader, to the, to the broader audience, to the point extra lounges is when you're kind of caught in your own bubble, you kind of, you lose, you lose perspective. Mm. That's a, that's a great point. And, and you're, you're absolutely right because man, I, I realized that I didn't want to be that. I, I didn't want to act that way to other people. Yeah. I wanted to be able to appreciate people for what for what they were and, and what they did. I didn't want to be a music snob, and and it changed my perspective on on how I judged others. It didn't mean that I that I liked everything that everybody did, but you know what? I learned I, I learned to enjoy things, and you know what? I made a whole lot more friends. I had a bigger support group. I, exactly. you know what, guess what? People actually liked my band more because they saw that I was out there supporting them. Right. You know, genres that I would have never thought that, that I would have enjoyed before all of a sudden I was enjoying and, and meeting new people and experiencing new things. Uh, Cause you're, and, you're supporting them, not just as artists, you're supporting them as human beings. Yeah. Yes. I think that's what I think is, was so not uh, not lost, but that was something that I, I kind of got perspective on because I have I have a couple of friends who are in a band and I I get to see you know from their perspective I get to, to see all this kind of happen especially because well, when they were younger like we got the chance to kind of float around them a little bit more because mm -hmm. it was just a little bit more free we were just younger and so I got to see firsthand the way that like that you know the way that they're you're you are with certain bands and the way that you are just acting as a human being to another person. I think and how you should be and how you shouldn't be. I got to see it all kind of happen in real time. It was really, really interesting to me. Yeah. yeah. But what's bothering in this case is that you can have your own opinion, you know, but yep. why say it on record, man? Yeah. Why, why, why go off on people? Yeah. Just, just to go off on people. Cause like, cause like, look, he says, he goes on, he says, and then of course that wore out. And then in 1991, the same exact thing happened again with the grunge wave. He added, so obviously, as you might already have figured out, I'm not a follower. I don't follow tw trends. If anything, I make trends. I don't follow. And I've always been very clear in my vision on where I want to go and what I want to do. And my art is too important to me to dilute with trying to follow other things. So I just don't do that. This is the worst cockiest <laughs> yeah. attitude you could possibly have because you so, know what? Someone, yeah. Someone doesn't like, like to be outshined, man. Someone right. Someone doesn't well, like to be outshined. Go, go ahead. And here's the thing. Say the word sex pistols. Say the word Nirvana. Say, yeah. say, say, say some, some of these different band names, on, right? Ronnie, man. Yeah. That, that fall within that, the category of what he's talking about. Then yeah. say Yngwie Malmsteen. And like we found out the other night, TW, when we were trying to yeah. talk about this, um, people just don't know who this guy is anymore. Yeah. Yeah. The, the people who idolize this guy are very few and far between now. They're only musicians. It reminds me, it reminds me of like, if you go to like a dream theater concert, and I like dream theater, like, and I don't think, and I, and I don't think dream theater has this yeah. attitude right, no. at all, but those guys are super talented, but the fans, the fans of people like that are, are kind of the problem, <laughs> you're right. Because like you, you go see a show like that. And instead of people like enjoying the music with smiles on their faces, they're kind of standing there with their arms crossed, like, show me something, show me something. And I've seen people, dude, I've seen people literally go to, to see like dream theater and other progressive bands like that. And then come back and be like, Oh yeah, I could do that. They're not as good as I thought they were. <laughs> no, but what was I? No, the one thing I was they're thinking, not, of, they're not even able to enjoy it, man. And it's like, you know, I, especially when you know the people and you know how yeah. they play and you're like, mm, no, you, no, you can't. 
<laughs> get some perspective. But like the other yes. thing was, as far as I'm not a follower, I don't follow trends. <laughs> I know that. No, the reason here's why I say that. Relative to you guys, I am actually a very frequent listener to the music of Ingve Malmsteen. Mm-hmm. That is so full of you know what, and the reason I say that <laughs> is because the al- there's an album that he released in I believe it was 1988. Yeah, I'll have to double check the dates later. We can yeah. do that in, in notes and so forth. Is an album called Odyssey. That album is basically Ingve's style of music fused with the basically the the AOR or the pop rock of the era. Like if you listen to a song like Hold On or a song like Heaven Tonight or a song like Now Is The Time on that record, if you listen to those, they're great songs. But to say that he is, does not follow trends, that is wholly untrue. From what I have, like at least subjectively to me, from what I have heard and also looking at what, it, what came out in the decade before, like in, in the years before that record came out, that does not say to me that he doesn't follow trends. No, man, he he doesn't follow trends. He makes trends. Again, with respect <laughs> to his ego, that is also sort of true. But again, it, it doesn't justify the ego. It's no. just like, no. wow. You know, like basically the reason why I think a lot of um, there's a subgenre of heavy metal for our listeners called uh, called power metal. There are a lot of guys in that genre that are very inspired by Ingve Malmsteen, and Ingve Malmsteen being part of sort of a broader what they call neoclassical movement, due to the inclusion of like 16th and you know sort of 15th, 16th, 17th century Western European art music, what we would call classical music here in North America, or even kind of more broadly in the English language, introduced that into a heavy metal context. Guys like Ingve Malmsteen, guys like you know Chris and Pelletieri, guys like like um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, Tony McAlpine, guys like that brought a sort of a neoclassical edge to it. So mm-hmm. in, in the same way that yes, he did make trends to say that mm. he's not a follower of trends is, is like I said, kind of losing the plot. Yeah, but even if he's in his quote unquote trend, he's not the best. Even of in the age, he wasn't the I don't best. think so either. I don't even think so either as a, He's probably he's one of the best when it comes to technique, but with respect to yeah. songwriting, even though I find him a, a competent songwriter, a good songwriter, yeah. there are, pardon me, musicians and, and bands in a similar genre whose music I will listen to far more because the songwriting is more appealing to me. Yeah. yeah. I'm just amazed that we're in 2021. Like this isn't this isn't 1993, man. When I first met the guys that I started my first band with, right? Like I, so, I this isn't the cover 19- of NME at the period, you know. Like I could yeah, see this on like, the cover of, of NME. Yeah, man. This is this is something that like I would expect out of Yingve, you know, like late 80s, you know, something like that. This is 2021. Yeah. Like what in the <laughs> world? Like nobody knows who Yingve is in popular music nowadays, uh, except for those those guitarists or you know musicians who grew up with him or whatever, or maybe discovered him. I guess you know. But like, let's be honest, he's it's not like he's blowing up the charts. I mean, he may be putting out this new album or whatever, but he's not he's not blowing up the charts. Here's here's also what irked me, and I know part, that I, I yes, and I know that this bothered you, TW. Because uh, because you talked about his collaborations. Well, he totally undoes that with this paragraph. And he just says, Momstein then stated that, uh, relatedly, he didn't want to dilute it with collaborations either. Sonic Perspective <laughs> asked <laughs> if he would ever collaborate again with keyboardist Derek um, uh, Sherinian. Derek Sherinian. Yeah, or generally, well, actually, before you continue... Before you continue, coincidentally, uh, related to our earlier discussion, Derek Sherinian actually was in Dream Theater for about uh, two or three years. He was on there the Falling go. Into Infinity record. There you go. So, so mind you, the person asking Yingve this question yes. is, assume, is, is assuming it's because Yingve has worked with these people before. They're amazing musicians in their own right. Yes. You know, uh, and and he says, hey, would you work? Would you collaborate again with with uh, with Derek Sherinian or drummer John uh, Macaluso? And he clarified. 
Yin Fei <laughs> clarifies something for him. Mind you, these were guys who were on his albums. Like, like, can you imagine? Can you look David Lee Roth with the big head that David oh. Lee Roth has, right? I mean, and who like look, dude, you go, you go back in history, you ain't gonna find many lead singers who have a bigger head or think more of David themselves Lee than David Lee Roth. Lee. But if you ask David Lee Roth, David, hey, would you collaborate with Steve Vai again? Yeah, man, you know I would. Yeah, boozy, boozy, bop, boozy, bop, ah! You know, I mean, like he would go crazy, but he'd be sitting there talking about yeah, because Steve Vai added so much to the energy of what he was doing when he broke out solo from Van Halen, right? Yeah. And then uh, Bill, was it Billy, Sheen? Sheen. Billy Sheehan? Billy Sheehan, right? Worked with. Yeah, Billy, Billy Sheehan, Billy was, Sheehan. He was one of his first bass players. Yeah, man. And uh, who was it who played drums for him? Uh, I mean, he had an all-star team, dude. Oh, yeah. that was, was that was that Greg Bissonette? Yes, Greg Bissonette. Yeah, yeah, dude, you're not going to get a better band than that. Yeah, I that mean, was one, that was no one kidding. Of then, one solo, then to follow it up. Yes, yes, Lane Deli. That's when he it was solo. just after he. Had, it was just I think it was just before he just before he did Passion and Warfare, which was in '91, because he did Flexible in '86, and then he joined David Lee Roth, and then he did Passion and Warfare. In well, she lost it for a second. Yeah. Yeah. Obviously. <laughs> but, Are you guys back? Am I back? Yeah, no, I, th I think Yingbei yeah, is trying to back. shut you up, man. I think Yingbei is trying no. to get to you, man. Get to your is, But yes, I'll, I'll kind of say David Lee Roth has worked with some phenomenal musicians over the years. Like he's worked yeah, with. But, but that thing is, is, is and, and, and as crazy as David and, is. As crazy never, as David is. As crazy as David is. And David Lee yeah. Roth, remember, remember when, when, when it looked like Van Halen was going to get back together when they appeared at the MTV Music Awards? Remember years ago, yeah. and, and he and he told he told Eddie Van Halen, you know, who was talking when they were being interviewed, and Eddie was talking about how he's going to have to have hip replacement surgery at the time, and the and the the people the uh, interviewers were asking, you know, if they were going to get back together or whatever, and you know, Dave was you know playing it up or whatever. Remember, Eddie says that Dave famously looked at 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 Eddie and said, "Hey, tonight's night about your hip. Tonight's about me, right?" <laughs> but even so, even so, even with that. If you, I know for a fact because David is. I've seen plenty of interviews where David has talked about about the bands that he's been in, and you know Steve Vai and and Greg Bissonette and all of them. He respected the people that he played with, and he appreciated their 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 input and what they brought to the records that he did and the live shows that he did. And so this next statement, this just really ticks me off because it says Yingve clarifies after being asked if he would collaborate again with these amazing musicians. He says, no. Cause I don't collaborate with people. I write all parts dot, dot, dot. They were hired to record with me. Then I wrote the parts and sounds and so forth. Has mom seen ever heard of Guthrie Gorman? I don't think so. <laughs> no kidding. That's the kind of thing, man. That you say somebody's face, some people will punch you right in the face. Like on, this you, is the stupidest you, thing ever. You know, I mean, that's it just a dumb so thing to insulting. say. It's so it's rude so and insulting. insulting to to like not even just session musicians, but like the fact that for the last, you know, in his career, there were points when literally Ingve Malmstein had a band, you know, and it yeah. was a band. Like pretty much from 86, because the yeah. first record was really kind of himself, but he did have other musicians play on it. But effectively between like 85, 80 or 85, 86 and 96, it was really the band. You know, he had Jens and Anders Johansson, who are both a respectively incredible keyboardist and drummer. I'm forgetting their bassist off the top of my head. And he had a great singers. You know, he had um, a guy who I, 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 Fine is okay, but also good. His name is, oh my goodness, I never thought I'd forget his name. The, the guy who was in there first, and then there was Mark Bowles, who's a phenomenal singer. And then um, uh, Joe Lynn Turner, who, was, uh, who was, uh, would later go on to be in Deep Purple. He was in Rainbow before that. Uh, the guy at the beginning was Jeff Scott Soto. He's, a, he's also a great singer. Mm. And then he had a great band in the 90s with like a full Swedish band, because he's from Sweden. And he, yeah, he got yeah. to have a, you know a great musician in Euron Edmond who was his who was his singer, and he got to have these other great musicians in his band. And I don't know why this seems so lost on him. I don't know what happened <laughs> in the last sort of fifteen it. years of his musical career. He's lost the plot. He has lost the plot. 
No, we also lost you, TW. <laughs> we got him back though. Yeah, no, I, but I, I agree with you, uh, TW. I mean, I, I listened to this new song, uh, this Relentless Fury song. I guess it's off his new album. Uh, you know, they, they talk about this as his first album in two years. Apparently, he did a blues album back in 2019 called Blue Lightning. Um, it, this this uh, this new album comes actually July 23rd. But that's my that's my grandma's birthday. Uh, and uh, but yeah, I. Yeah. Right. Uh, that's the thing is it, it, this relentless fury song. It, look, I listened to this the other day and it's OK. It's actually pretty decent. But it follow, you know, for him saying that he that he doesn't follow trends, it follows all of those 80s tropes, man. Yeah. Like like all those things that like I love. Don't get me wrong. I absolutely love them. But man, it's power chords and, you know, these melodic kind of things. And then, of course, when it gets to the guitar solo, it's just, you know high octane you know yeah. all over the place you know whatever but uh, you know like i said that that part of it you know he kind of just does this double whammy attacking punk music that punk music is something very very emotional for people it it very uh, revolutionary yes it's like, how people express themselves absolutely it man also it changed so much it changed so much like and i'm not saying like it changed music i'm saying punk itself has changed quite a quite a bit in the last you know or from 70 you know if you want to go back to like 75 to 95 it's changed a lot i mean it we got hardcore out of it we got skate punk out of it we got ska punk out of it we got so much other stuff because they're listening to these other things we got pop punk i mean pop punk that blew up in the 90s and and has yeah. in itself changed a substantive amount in the last 10 years yeah it's all the subgenres man it takes all of it. It really does take all of it. And uh, and what and, did he say? What did he say? He said that punk fa fa did fade away. Is that, is that what he said? It wore yeah, out. 1991? Yeah, that, that it wore out around. before 1991. Oh, no. But there was Nirvana after 1991. No? Yeah, like the guy missed the point. Like, like uh, I, I just I, I just feel I feel like when I look at look at Yingbei, and like, it's also resurfaced in the two thousands with the uh, Green Day and uh, others, I guess. And you can't even really say that it resurfaced in the two thousands with Green Day because if you think about it, Green Day really have been around since eighty what eighty something, and then yeah, late nineties, you know, yeah. and then and and, and and Dookie came out in ninety four. Dookie came out in ninety four yeah. and yeah. took off, and like punk has punk has never gone on a way in the way that people think it has it just when punk started in the mid you know in the mid 70s with guys like the pistols and the ramones and but especially a lot of the uk guys who came who yeah the uk guys who came after the ramones like a lot of those guys who brought in the sort of the alice cooper kind of showmanship and to, to go over the top because they were genuinely you know i mean the punk like you know the not the pistols but there were guys in the punk movement who were genuine anarchists you know like, and, yeah. and I'm not saying that as yeah. an insult. I'm saying yeah. they were just, they were fundamentally different than what they were doing. The purpose of punk was always to go against the status quo, right? And that's why it always, if it gets lucky enough to blow up, it does. But it's. Yeah, we lost him again. <laughs> <laughs> Yingbei does not want him to say what he has to say. Yeah, man. It's, it's all good. Uh, but uh, we'll, we'll get it back in a second. Uh, but I'm back. I'm uh, yeah, oh, uh, there you are. Yeah, there you there are. You yeah, go. we we lost you for a second, but yeah, Am you're back. Yeah, you're okay. Here. Well, like like, but yeah, punk is you know, punk was never done for the purpose of making money. Is what I'm saying. It was just its own thing. Yeah, and I think and I think it's I think it's limiting yourself if you if you just cut yourself off, especially as a musician, man. Like to cut yourself off yes. from. From from different genres and just act like they didn't exist, you know, like like that nothing after ninety one was any good, or or that it just wore out and like nobody paid like when the rest of the freaking world paid attention to it and it was a thing. I, I just when I look at Yingve, I just feel it's like, like he's I'm, like I'm this a, lonely guy. guy, like that he's this lonely guy sitting yeah. <laughs> in his mansion. I'm sure, I'm sure he's got a mansion, you know, and yeah. he's he's doing his thing because he's made his money, whatever. But I just, feel, I just, yeah, I just, but I just feel like he's kind of like, got to be like lonely and miserable that he's like that self-absorbed. Yeah. And it's just, there's, there's so much like it, another example is I'm a, I'm a guy who listens to thrash metal. It would be like the guys, who, you know, the guys in sort of there's, you know, 
insular guys, exactly. And there are some guys you know in the movement who try and not look at any music that came out basically after 88, 89, 90, right? There are some guys in that movement who just don't want to look at anything new. They, they don't want to be, they're like the priest who doesn't want to look down Galileo's telescope. And that's a mm -hmm. problem. Yeah. You have to be willing to, you have to be willing to express yourself and you have to be willing to, to be open and to, to new things. Who's your, yeah. who's your favorite trash band, CW? Your favorite yeah, trash band? Yeah, mine's probably Megadeth. Oh, I see. What about you, Inash? Uh, my gosh. Um, yeah, I mean, Megadeth was... Uh, I'm trying to, I'm trying to think of everybody who falls within that category. Uh, because I, I would look at, you know, early Metallica. Yeah. Early Metallica. As that, and, Metallica yeah. And that would, and that would, that would, that would, Exodus. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, Slayer, like, I li man, Slayer. I'd like, I'd like some anthrax, uh, yeah. uh, Slayer's got some good stuff, but yeah, I, you know, I, I always looked at like that early Metallica stuff is just, Hmm. Nada. Yeah, that was some good stuff. Man. It, it yeah. just seems to make There's the most right. sense. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> I, I remember, I remember being a kid and I had a friend who had the ride the lightning album and, and like, and I'll be honest, So when I first started playing guitar, like one of the first songs that I learned was fade to black. Yeah. And, uh, and oh, really? I mean, and then, and yeah, and then we just go through that album. I mean, when I remember when I started playing guitar, I mean, Metallica was, was there, man? So like, but you did learned... you know, guys, that Mustaine has some songs in Ride the Lightning or not? He actually co-wrote some songs. Oh, yeah. in Ride the Lightning. Really? Ride the Lightning, yeah. the song. Ride the yeah, Lightning, exactly. the song. He co-wrote Ride the Lightning. He co-wrote Call of Cthulhu. If you listen to the Call of Cthulhu, you know the chord progression that dun 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 dun. dun. That <laughs> is an arpeggiated progression. He, he used that progression later on in Hangar 18. It's the same chord progression at the beginning of the song. No, no, it shows. It shows, man. Yeah. Co -wrote, well, he co-wrote Ride the Lightning. He co-wrote The Call of Cthulhu. He co-wrote On Kill Em All. He co-wrote No Remorse. He co-wrote Metal Militia. He co-wrote The Four Horsemen, which is how he got mechanics on Killing Is My Business. Wow. Uh, he co-wrote Whiplash. Dave yeah, Mustaine's influence is all over all over when the they were when when they were recording Kill 'Em All, he was still a guitarist. Yeah, man, they went man. up to New York it's, to go it's, record it's, Kill 'Em All, and his his drinking his drinking got too bad, and yeah. they'd basically given him you know multiple chairs. Yeah, they, no, this they is, did. They get they gave him multiple chances, and, and this is relative to Metallica, where in the eighties. You know, literally, one of the nicknames that they had was Alcoholica. I mean, those guys mm. loved to drink. So put that put that into perspective. Then what happened? Because the thing was, even Mustaine himself said, you know, the other guys would get silly. Mustaine himself would get angry and violent, and that's why it didn't gel, and that's why he had to leave, and that's why they brought in Kirk Hammett. James yeah. still does right now. He just got out of rehab recently. Yeah. 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 But yeah, I mean, like th those bands, man, those, those, those things, like I, I just, it, it, it's very, it's very disheartening to me to see somebody just be dismissive of people and their art. Like, cause like, look, you don't have to like it. You don't have to like certain, you know, every genre, you know, like, look, everybody's got something different, but I don't think we should ever just be dismissive of somebody's art. Like the thing that they put their heart into the thing that they write, you know, when they write music, when they write songs or whatever, I don't care if, I don't care if it's the most complex thing you could possibly ever, you know, that you can't even wrap your head around how it works. Or if it's a three chord, you know, punk song that just, you know, is just uh, speed from the moment that it starts, you know, to the moment that it ends, you know, and it just, a, it sounds like a bunch of gibberish. Uh, I, I got a friend who plays in an old school punk band called uh, Desiring Dead Flesh. And I'll never forget, he gave me like, th and, th and they were old school too, because like their album, he gave me his album, like literally they were burning CDs and they'd take a stencil and they'd spray paint. Their logo was like this skull with like a, a spiky mohawk on it. Yeah. And so they would spray the uh, the logo on just like a regular you know thing, just stencil. And they would give them away. And then they, they would print out all their lyrics. All their songs, dude, were like, 20 seconds long if that i mean like it was just like it was like you know just like just just going right at it and i'll never forget the first time i popped it in because i got it and and i i popped in the cd and i'm listening to the car and like i kept thinking my gosh this 
this song has a lot of stops and starts. Like, you know, it's like they'd be going along at a, at a clip and all of a sudden the song would stop. And then all of a sudden you'd be, you know, just like, what, two, three, four, and they'd go like on a different thing. And I'm thinking, my gosh, man, these, they're like all over the place right now, man. They're just like, like all these stops and starts and stuff. And I ended up looking down at the CD player in my van and I was on track six. And that's when I realized that was six different songs. That yep. wasn't one song. That was six yeah. different songs all in the space of a minute and a half. And, uh, I, I and so upon death, I understand completely, but, but like some of, but you know, and that's the thing is like, I played, I've played that album for some people and they're just like, they don't get it, you know, whatever. And, but I listen to it, man. And I, and I get it. I understand it. I feel it. And I, I just don't think yeah. that anybody should put down anybody's art. You, you may not get it, but somebody does. You know, and yeah. we talk about that a lot here at the Point Extra Lounge about that's the one you know, thing about like what you like and and what yeah. somebody else like. It's like we talk when we talk about Zack Snyder. You know, you, you're wearing your Zack Snyder shirt, man. Uh, or you know, like when we talk about Snyder versus man. Yes, heck yeah. Or like, or like Goldman, our, our our mutual friend Enosh, the Goldman. Yes, is more your yes. friend than mine. It's just it's not not that I dislike him, it's just he you know him better than I do. Yeah. Um. He he had a, a quote which you've relayed to me many times, which absolutely is, with regards to Star Wars. Your least favorite Star Wars film is somebody else's favorite. Yeah. So if you if you have that mindset for every sort of type of thing that you're looking into, whether it's, you know, pop culture, whether it's music, whether it's sports, whether it's whatever, when you understand that, you get a chance to empathize. You get a chance to understand the other person, right? And I think that kind of gets, like I said, gets lost in a lot of people. You, you know what, T.W.? exactly <laughs> well, well hey guys i, I appreciate i appreciate you guys coming on uh to everybody watching this is just something I, I wanted to talk about this because i think because i think it goes over in the over the overall of of like what we talk about a lot here at the lounge and uh and as a musician myself uh this just really rubbed me the wrong way and yeah. uh and I, and I tell people look i don't go looking for fights you know like i'm not trying to get into a fight with Ingve malmstein uh you know whatever i'm not trying to pick a fight with him but but the but the thing is is every once in a while you see something that it's like as a human being you just you get a ask yourself why you just get a a, a passion inside yeah, of you, you get a gumption inside of you just, yeah. yeah and you just got to say you know yeah. like it's i don't like think the, that this is like right the genre thing it's like the genre thing rubbed you the wrong way and that really ticked you off in the way that collaboration like you've heard me like that just wanted to pull my hair out i'm like it, 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 he lost the plot <laughs> Hey man, yeah. for me, I'm inspired from grunge, the grunge era. I like yeah. punk, I like metal, I even like pop. So yeah. come on, man. Yeah. Well, hey, uh, Lana Deli, why don't you tell everybody the name of your band and uh, maybe where we can find you? Yeah, it's the Grunge Garage. Oh, okay. That's my, nice. yeah, we're a trio. So we're inspired. We, we play grunge, we play. Oh, Nirvana, we play some Alice in Chains, Pearl Jam, acoustically. And uh, yeah, nice. we also play Rage Against the Machine. We have our own stuff. And, cool. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. And are you, are you like on all the, like the platforms or whatever? Do you have stuff that's out there that, that we can find? Uh, there, yeah, we, we can, uh, you can find uh, my band on Instagram, type in the Grunge Garage on Facebook. And okay. yeah. Cool. Yeah. Well, I'll make sure I'll make sure the links are down in the description below, so you guys can I'll, yeah. I'll 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 do the research for you, and then that way you guys can just uh, you can just go down in the description and uh, and find links to that stuff and uh, and and take a listen uh, to was it the I'm gonna need garage. to hear you, yeah, but I'm gonna I'm gonna need to hear your band, you know. Yeah, man. I'm gonna, for sure. I'm gonna need to hey, hear you playing with your band. Speaking speaking of which, I'm excited because this Monday. Yeah. Me and the band are meeting and having our first rehearsal in a long, yeah. long time. Oh, really? Yes, because we can finally get back together. Uh, our drummer was concerned for the longest okay. time. Him and his him and his wife. He's my best friend. Him and his wife had had uh, their first child just a few months ago, about five months ago. I haven't even seen her yet, oh. and so. Uh, so it's like, you know, but they've been trying to be extra careful, you know, because of their baby and everything. And so totally understandable in these times that we live in. But uh, but with things here in Michigan being uh, being good the way yeah. that they are. Uh, yeah, we're, we're starting to open up, you know, and, and places well, whatever. are having, yeah, having trust bands me, and music. Trust me, man, it's going to feel good. I oh, swear. I can't wait. Yeah, I, can't I just wait. played two gigs. And, yes. And whenever you come up and see me, you know, I'll show you're 
planning on coming up north once the borders open up. You got to bring me some of the Antioch CDs. I'll buy them off you if you have any spares. So, so I don't. Ha- I'll, I'll have to burn you copies, dude. Of, of I, I don't even have. I don't, <laughs> I don't even. I don't even have. Like I could probably send you digital stuff, man, because I don't even have sure. like physical media of that stuff Why anymore, not? man. I sold That's all the. Phys- I, I've sold all the physical media of that of that uh, stuff that I, that I even had, man, long, long time ago. But yeah, it's some of that's so so. Che- you were talking about cheesy. Some of that, some of that's cheesy. When we recorded the Antioch album, my my old band, for those of you who are wondering, that I played it yes. for ten years. Uh, so we recorded one album that was pretty decent, but we were super green. That was when we first started. We were really young. We got a little older, and in two thousand one, the band was super talented. But we started recording. We did this home recording project that we were doing like on the fly because we were flying out to Vegas, and we just wanted to have like a uh, an EP. So we were going to put this six song thing together, and we got the whole thing recorded. My drummer recorded all the drums at his house. It sounded great, and we were transferring them to digital and i screwed up i take full oh. i take full oh. full responsibility for it we're putting it over and i was listening on a set of headphones that apparently were really bassy mm. and so i turned the bass down oh no when, when, when my friend matt ended up because we were recording at his house uh, in sarnia ontario and when he started mixing the whole thing it he he just said enash he played it for me he got he had like rough mixes of it he's like Dude, it sounds like it sounds like typewriter. Oh, it sounded like he was he was, he was beating on like gr- uh, like uh, trash can lids. I mean, it was just it was oh. so it was so just no. And he couldn't add low end to it the way that it was. It was just like it has been sucked out. It was just oh, bad. Yeah. And so and so it was like we either were gonna ditch the project or Matt was like, hey, I can use my drum machine on it. And, uh, and so, oh man, I don't know if I, if I had to do it all over again, I don't know if I would have done it the same way that we did. Cause we were like, <laughs> sure, Matt, go ahead. And then I had listened to some stuff that like, he had a really good drum, sh- drum machine sound. The drum machine sound that he used was so horrible. It's like so, so cheesy <laughs> oh, and so oh bad. And, but you know what? I stand by the songs. I stand by the song. If you have a good, if you have a good song, it will cut through all the production. It it, it will, it will yeah. resonate with someone. Yeah. I think, I think as a musician, you can appreciate what was there. Yeah. Uh, my, my drummer, uh, God bless him. He, he was never happy with what happened afterwards because his drums were totally cut out of the project. And, and Matt didn't even, I don't think even try to play because he was so rushed for it. He didn't even try to play what, <laughs> what Andy had played. Oh and so it was goodness. just, it was sad, but you know what? We did what we did and, uh, you know, and now those songs are there and stuff, but my, my band, some strange way, man, I loved being in that band and some of the best stuff I think that I've ever written and just a lot of good times. And now with my band waking Vegas, I just, I just love playing music, you know, and, uh, and mu- music is a language that speaks to everybody all, all over the world, man. Look, yes. you're, you're in Morocco, you're yeah. in Canada. I'm in the United States and wherever you're watching this, you're watching this. And so, uh, Hey, music brings us all together. It's like the force. Definitely. It binds us together. It's, it, it flows through us, you know, and, uh, we got to resist the dark side. Got to resist the dark side of the, of the ying vase of the world. <laughs> <laughs> right. We, we got, we, we got to resist, uh, Darth, Darth Malmsteen. <laughs> look at him look at him he kind of looks like a darth there yeah. doesn't he he kind of he has that that look to him like he's gonna like come out of nowhere da, 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 da. anyways anyways so that that that's all uh uh but uh that's just what i wanted to share with you guys thank you guys for coming on i appreciate both of you Whenever and your you uh and you guys and you guys being a part of the lounge Thank you to everyone who joined us today. I uh, hope you enjoyed this uh, talk about music. And uh, I'd love to hear what you think of this article. Are, have you been a Yingve Malmsteen fan? Maybe you've been like a couple of us. Like you just really don't like him. Maybe you're like TW where you've really appreciated his music, but maybe you don't appreciate his attitude. Or you know what? Maybe you're just like, you know what? Screw you guys. I really like both his attitude and his music. <laughs> you, guys, you guys person. suck. You guys suck, you know, yeah. like, you know, and like, do we agree with you? Well, we don't, but that's okay. <laughs> that's, that's okay. That's okay. Uh, you know what? We, we, we persevere and we keep going. And so, uh, so, uh, and just, just one more time for good measure for, uh, Lena Deli. Yeah. Restore the freaking Snyderverse already. 
Just just yeah. do it. All right. Come on, guys. Just, yeah. Come on, WV. Exactly. <laughs> hey, remember what I always say. Don't let anybody tell you that your fandom doesn't matter. Don't tell anybody that their fandom doesn't matter, even if it's music or whatever it is. But seek to have good conversations. Yes, and respect people. Have good respect for people. Have good conversations. And if you do that, there will always be a place for you here in the Poindexter Lounge. Until next time, stay nerdy and rock on. <laughs>